Hi everyone. So I wanted to come on and, and just do a video and just talk about some things um, that the Lord has, has shown me. Um, uh, last night I happened to sit down and my husband was watching this show that they have. He just turned it on. We'd never seen it. And it's called, um, I wrote it down here. You know how the Lord shows you things. It, 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 it's like your spiritual antenna antennas go off and it's called Showtime with Apollo. And it's a theater where people go and it's like a contest and they sing or they do some kind of act or something and they try to win the contest. But the theater is called Apollo and it's in New York. And this kid, the seven year old came on stage and he was rapping and he was singing and rapping on one of those, um, oh, what are they called? Um, a glider, a hover, a hoverboard or with the wheels on it where they lean forward and it pushes them around. And I happened to notice that when they introduced him, he goes by, he had a few names that he went by, but he goes, one of them was Otis. So if you've ever followed any of my dreams or other videos, I had a dream where I seen Danny from Blue Bloods, that show, The Blue Bloods. He's a, a Wahlberg, a Danny Wahlberg. And in the stream, he was screaming in my face, and he said, Right now, Otis has a weapon in the back of this building that's ready to, to kill millions of people. And I woke up from the dream. And this was before the, the Blue Blood, Red Moon. And, um, and this show takes place in New York. Okay, so when this little boy came out, and he's, on, he's at the Apollo Theater... And this little, like, Apollyon, Apollyon, or whatever, that's what I thought of it. And he came out, and they introduced him, one of his names, as Otis. My spiritual antennas perked up, you know? And, um, and Otis, I looked it up. I, I looked up the name Otis. Um, I forget. Oh, you guys, I'm showing this picture because we got baby chickens. And so I wanted to, to share with you guys. And my, my daughter marked each of their feathers with different, a little colored marker swipe to tell them all apart. <laughs> anyway, so, so when uh, he said, so I looked up the name Otis after that dream. And um, I noticed that there was a rapper that actually sang a song about it. Now it's Beyonce's husband. And it's called Otis. And Otis means only the Illuminati survive. And that's what the name of the song was. And I was thinking, oh, no, no, no. You know, and uh, I've been given a vision about the Illuminati. I seen a Masonic compass in the sky with a sun in the middle of it. And then I seen uh, the sun like, like shoot through me. It was weird. And then I seen... A mushroom cloud and nuclear explosion. This was a vision. I was still awake when I was having this. And um, and then recently, um, I had a dream where I heard Genith Rothschild, but I think I might have heard it wrong because there's no such word as Genith. I think it was Zenith, and Zenith means like shooting through space or something like that. And Rothschild is Jacob Rothschild. He's, you know, the Rothschilds family. They're one of the most wealthy run in the scenes, the world scene, you know, shadow type of government there is. There's a few of them and the Rothschilds is one of them. And, and he is Illuminati. He built the Supreme Court in Jerusalem and the whole courtroom is set up to third degree masonry. And um, on the outside of it, it has a, um, a plaque 
dedicated to Jacob's Rothschild and family. And there is the pyramid with all C and I in the middle of it. So anyway, back to this um, Apollo theater with the little Otis boy. Um, I also noticed too, when this little boy, when any of them walked up on stage, there sitting on the side of the stage was a wooden tree stump. It was like sawed off and it was polished down and everything. And it, it, to me, it just looked like a tree stump. I don't know if it, that's exactly what it was, but when they walked on stage, they would rub their hand around the rim of it for, for luck, I guess. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> okay. So my spiritual antennas were going off. And then a couple days ago, um, I was led to this man's dream in 1937. Um, who was it? It was the guy that dreamt it lived in Reno, or not Reno, um, Fresno. And it was by Joe Brandt. He lived in Fresno, California in 1937, and he was riding a horse, and he fell off and bumped his head. He got a concussion, and he was laying in the hospital day after night after day after night, and he was having this dream, and it would pick up where it left off. And I wanted to read this dream to you guys if you have never read it before. Um, okay, so... This is his account of it. I woke up in the hospital room with a terrific headache as if the whole world was revolving inside my brain. Now this man, this guy was 17 years old. Okay. I remember vaguely the fall from my horse Blackie. As I lay there, pictures began to form in my mind. Pictures that moved with the speed of lightning. Pictures that revolved. Pictures that stood still. I seemed to be in another world, whether it was the future or whether it was some ancient land, I cannot say. Then slowly, like the silver screen of the talkies, or TVs, I think, but with color and smell and sound, I seemed to find myself in Los Angeles. It was Los Angeles, it was bigger, much bigger, and buses and odd-shaped cars crowded the city streets. I thought about Hollywood Boulevard and I found myself there on Hollywood Boulevard. Whether this is true, I don't know, but there were a lot of guys about my age with beards and wearing some of them earrings. Okay, guys, and I, I had to read over this so many times. Now, what is the fad today for these young men? They're all growing beards and a lot of them have earrings in their ears, especially in Hollywood. They have that dapper hair, and they have the beards. You see it all on um, the young people today. You, um, football players, basketball players, um, baseball players, they're all growing the beards. That's the fad, okay? And then all the girls wore real short skirts, and they slouched along moving like sorry, I just found a yellow jacket crawling on my leg fun wow um, thank you Jesus that didn't sting me okay so all the girls wore real short skirts and they slouched along moving like a dance I wondered if I could talk to them and I said hello but they didn't hear or see me I decided that I would look as funny to them as they looked to me I tried for a while that crazy kind of walk. I guess it is something you have to learn, and I couldn't do it. I noticed there was quietness about the air, a kind of stillness. Something else was missing, something that should be there. At first, I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know what it was, then I did. There were no birds. I listened. I walked two blocks north of the boulevard, all houses, no birds. I wondered what had happened to them. Had they gone away? Where? Again, I could hear the stillness. I had never experienced anything like it. I listened, just the stillness. Then I knew something was going to happen. I wondered what year it was. It certainly was not 1937. 
I saw a newspaper on the corner with a picture of the president. It surely wasn't Mr. Roosevelt. He was bigger, heavier, with big ears. Okay, so I looked up pictures of President and Trump. It surely wasn't Obama. It surely is not Obama, you guys. Um, it's got to be Trump. If it wasn't 1937, I wondered what year it was. It looked like 1969, but I wasn't sure. My eyes weren't working just right. Okay, now I know that this man was seen this day and age. But when he looked at that paper, the Lord showed him the year 1969. Remember Chanda had that dream of the exit? 69. And others have been seeing the number 69. And I was talking to uh, Sherry last night, I think. And she was saying that Kennedy was assassinated in 69. And people are saying that Trump disappears in his, he, he, he doesn't finish his term. So that's just some things to think about. Okay, don't take it, my word for it. These are just things that I've been thinking about. <clears throat> so someone was coming, someone in 1937. It was a fat nurse ready to take my temperature. I woke up, crazy dream. Okay. Uh, my headache is worse. It is a wonder I didn't get killed on that horse. I've had another crazy dream back in Hollywood. Those people, why do they dress like that? I found myself back on the boulevard. I was waiting for something to happen. Something big was going to happen, and I was going to be there. I looked up at the clock down by that big theater. It was 10 minutes to 4. Okay, have you guys ever seen 444? Um... I was told in a dream that 444 is the name of the Lord. Okay, so not literally, you guys. You know, <laughs> don't don't write to me like, that's not the name. And show me in scripture where it says 444. Okay, then the Lord, do a search on it scripturally. Not using uh, astronomy or whatever, but scripturally. The Lord uses four all through the Bible and all through Jewish tradition as well. And when you have triple of that number... It just means confirmations or, you know, it puts an emphasis on that number. And a lot of us have seen clocks in our dreams, too. So something big was going to happen. I walked down the street in the concrete in front of a theater. They had names of stars. It's the walk of Hollywood Walk of Fame, it seems. I recognized a few of them. The other names I had never heard. I was getting bored. I wanted to get back to the hospital in Fresno and I wanted to stay there on the boulevard, even if nobody could see me. Okay, he goes on to say it looks people they were the kids were dressed like Halloween. Uh, maybe it is some big Halloween doings, but it don't seem like Halloween. More like early spring. Okay, guys. So this stood out to me too because I was in my papa's house. And my papa, which represents the Lord, gave me a gift bag. And inside this gift bag, there were a bunch of cards. They were all pastel colors like Easter. Okay? But on these cards, when I took them out of the envelope, oh, he gave them to me. He said, this is for all the birthdays I've missed. And, okay, I was running around in the world. So that's all I could think of why he said that, at you know, back in, in the day. But... When I looked on these cards, they had little um, charms or something on them, like a little necklace. One had a ring. And on the necklace, it looks like it had Halloween stuff, like a Halloween spider. Like it was a Halloween little trinkets, little keychain trinkets and stuff. And I thought, and I, when I woke up, I thought, that's odd. We're, we got spring and we got Halloween. And that's not the first reference I've had to Halloween in a dream with spring. It's weird. Okay. So he thinks it's everybody looks like it's Halloween. 
They're all dressed like Halloween, crazed out, beards, earrings, mini skirts, walking funny, weird hair. Um, but he's like more like early spring, the way the weather was to him. Um, and, uh, and also too, I had this dream that I was sitting on the edge of the bed with this other lady and Matthew Patrick Winfrey and we had been given a yellow flyer from a school and it was an invitation slash flyer flyer for an event that was going to be happening in the fall. And this was probably a few weeks ago, maybe a month, last month. And I woke up. Okay, so, um, and I, I mean, I probably watched Matthew Patrick Winfrey like four or five times. I don't know, but, um, it was a yellow fall, like piece of paper, like marigold color. And it, we unfolded it and looked at it and it was talking about this event that was going to happen in the fall. Okay. So reading on, there was that sound again. Lack of sound, stillness, stillness. Okay. Uh, then he got woke up again. The moment of the happening. So I'm going back to that last moment on the boulevard. Some sweet kid went past dragging a little boy. Twins, I guess, by each hand. Her skirt was up, well, pretty high, and she had a tired look. I thought for a minute I could ask her about the birds, what had happened to them, and then I remembered she didn't see me. Her hair was all frowsy, way out all over her head. A lot of them looked like that, but she looked so tired and looked and like she was sorry about something. I guess she was sorry before it happened because it surely did happen. Okay, so he looks down the boulevard and he sees this tired, frazzled looking girl coming up the boulevard and in each of her hands she has twin boys. Okay, keep that in mind. There was a funny smell. I didn't, I don't like it. A smell of sulfur, sulfuric acid, a smell like death. For a minute I thought I was back in chemistry. When I looked around for the girl, she was gone. Okay, so she walks back. He's walks by her him she he smells something it smells like sulfur which that's what a lot of people have reported they smell that right before a serious earthquake um, sometimes boiling water even comes up into people's houses through their sinks and toilets anyway so uh, he smells this smell and everything and he looks back and this woman with the twins is gone well, that stood out to me it was as if something was going to happen and I could her help her, but she was gone. And I walked half a block, then saw the clock again. My eyes seemed glued on that clock. I couldn't move. I just waited. It was five minutes to four o'clock on a sunny afternoon. I thought I would stand there looking at that clock forever, waiting for the, for the something to come. And this video is long. I'm going to continue this in a minute.